I'm at the IAA show in Hanover, and I'm on Mercedes-Benz's massive stand. Now, the last few shows have all been about Euro 6, but the dust has finally settled on that. The question is, what comes next? Is it Euro 7? Now, the best person to answer that question is Mike Belk. He's the MD of Mercedes-Benz Truck UK. I think Euro 7 uh, is not on the cards right away. Um, you know, the big challenge now is with Euro 6 in place, making sure that you know, that uh, the benefits of Euro 6 are then sort of felt in terms of their impact you know, in the environment. But of course, you know, it's not just about um, fuel uh, particulates and NOx, it's also about the wider issue now of CO2. Um, and with the, the future probably more orientated towards you know, fleet averaging uh, emissions of CO2, I think the fuel efficiency story is where it's going to be in terms of the next phase. And of course, alternative fuels, whether it's gas or biofuels, all play a big part in that. And we've got a, you know, a great offer there now, um, which can offer customers, you know, alternatives from you know, the traditional uh, powertrains that we've been developing so far. So what's Mercedes-Benz doing to improve efficiency? For us it's the sum of the details uh, and road efficiency is uh, yeah, very important in that context. It's our sort of halo uh, description for where we think we differentiate in our offer which is you know, a lower total cost overall. That's clearly highly dependent on you know, fuel efficiency and um, with the new second generation drive line uh, for our Euro 6 uh, engines, yeah, optimizing the fuel efficiency by further up to 6%, that's a big step forward. But yeah, road efficiency is all about better safety uh, and with ABA4, uh, which now gives pedestrian recognition and full stopping of the vehicle and our side guard assist program, yeah, we've got, a, I think, a, a leading position now in terms of saying whether it be fuel efficiency or safety, you know, we, we, we have something that's different and unique. So is connectivity just about Mercedes-Benz uptime? Connectivity, I think, is about saying, you know, with 400 sensors now, um, which are going to be you know, in, built into our vehicles, how do we make use of that information for customers? Uh, in the past, it's very much been around telematics, about you know, monitoring engine performance and driver performance, uh, the future is going to be much more about providing information to, to customers about you know, predictive breakdowns, about um, making sure that we can help them to maximise the use of that vehicle. Um, and we're launching a product here called Mercedes-Benz Uptime, uh, which is a, again a world first uh, from a manufacturer. Um, utilizes the new uh, fleet board truck data center, which is going to be the, the core uh, black box, which sits in all of our vehicles now, to act as the interface to take out information from all of those sensors, put it through algorithms, um, and effectively that will make us, give us the ability to predict whether you know, uh, uh, maintenance is required at the next scheduled six weekly inspection. Obviously that can uh, help in terms of making sure the parts are available, make sure the right you know, length of time is scheduled in the workshop. Uh, but also, you know, if there's a, a critical failure about to happen, you know, the system will pick that up and will give the customer the choice then as to how to address that. So hopefully avoiding costly and timely breakdowns. You know, the reality is that the, the truck becomes a source of you know, data which can be used in a variety of ways. Um, as a manufacturer, you know, we're only able to um, you know, look at certain aspects in terms of you know, what we see as being fundamental to truck efficiency. Customers you know, have a much broader set of operating constraints, so uh, we're opening up now that data that's in the truck uh, through our fleet board app store. So going forward, customers and operators can design bespoke um, apps which can sit embedded in that truck uh, data center and it can actually suck out any kind of information that we're storing and manipulate it and, and cut it and dice it. Um, so I think again a first for us uh, moving into a, an era where we say you know the customers have access to all of that data to utilize as, 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 uh, as, as, they, as they want to. So 
So, Mike, this part of the stand is certainly attracting a lot of attention, and I can understand why too, but it all looks a bit science fiction to me. It may look science fiction, but I think the reality is much closer than, uh, than people perhaps recognise. Uh, certainly with the, uh, the Fuso Ecanter, here we have a product which is uh, scheduled for production next year. So, uh, you know, the cost issues have been overcome. Uh, the running cost of this vehicle is something like 40% less than a uh, regular standard uh, product we've been used to in the past. Um, and therefore, over a, a three-year uh, running uh, cycle of, of ownership, you know, the extra cost of the uh, powertrain you know, is, is fully amortized by the, the low running costs. We have now, for the first time, you know, a production-ready uh, economical uh, vehicle um, that actually, I think, has a, has, a, has a great place and a great role to play, certainly in the urban environment, where you know, the range uh, limitations of such a vehicle you know, uh, aren't a limitation in terms of its uh, daily use. So what do you see as the role of electric vehicles? I'm assuming it's just for urban operations. I think predominantly um, for urban distribution. Uh, you know, with, with the development in battery technology now, you know, we've already now developed the, um, the e-truck, uh, the Mercedes-Benz 26 tonne distribution truck, with a range of 200 kilometres. Uh, and our research would show that you know, most uh, urban delivery routes you know, are uh, certainly less than that. But of course, the vehicle also has to be therefore complemented by an intelligent you know, range management system. So here, the two worlds of electrification on connectivity come together. Both are going to be essential components of a future solution. And we're looking here at probably you know, the turn of the next uh, decade. So four to five years from now, the battery costs will come down significantly. Uh, the current battery cost is probably the restraining issue at the moment. Uh, the drivetrain and the rest of the componentry, you know, in terms of its cost and complexity, um, is, you know, is a known quantity. It's the battery cost which is going to be the decisive factor. Well, Mike, it certainly looks fantastic, but I'm assuming there's some major drawbacks here. It's going to be more expensive and heavier too. Well, you may think that, but I think uh, people will be surprised. Uh, first, let's deal with the weight issue. Um, this vehicle, fully configured with a 200 km range, battery powered, um, only has a weight penalty of uh, 1.75 tonnes versus the standard 26 tonner. Now, bearing in mind that governments um, are going to allow dispensation in terms of the, uh, the chassis plate of one tonne, that effectively means only a 750 kilogram penalty for what is a zero emission uh, distribution truck, which I think is quite amazing. In terms of the cost, clearly that's driven primarily by the battery technology. Um, at the moment, you know, battery technology in this uh, configuration you know, is in the order of you know, 40,000 euros. Now clearly that's not something at the moment which is economically uh, sustainable, but battery pricing is coming substantially down. Our view is that by the start of the next decade, which is when we're envisaging this uh, concept, you know, might be ready then for full-scale production, you know, those costs are going to come down so that a bit like the Fuso Ecanter, yeah, it'll be a premium price but with 40% or 50% lower running costs and therefore over a three or four year period the extra cost of this vehicle is probably amortised by the savings in fuel. So I've just noticed this, this isn't as futuristic uh, as people might think, is it? You've just launched it at the show, right? Absolutely, yeah. This is the new uh, side guard assist system. Effectively a rearward uh, and backward looking radar system that scans the full length, not just of the, uh, the tracked unit, but also the trailer. Okay. The purpose of the system is to identify any pedestrians or cyclists uh, in the near side blind spot of the vehicle and effectively to provide a, first of all a visual audible warning to the driver but then if the, uh, the vehicle turns across the path of pedestrians or cyclists we'll actually fully stop the vehicle. Fantastic, are you talking rigid and Uh To start with we've launched it on tractors so it's available left hand drive to start with. Um, the uptake of the safety packs in the UK market is pretty low at the moment really? so uh, the issue for us is 
you know, to make sure that we make the case for saying this is a required technology in the UK as well as the rest of Europe uh, and to have a, you know, a significant opportunity then to improve pedestrian and cycle safety. Yeah. So why is the take-up of safety features lower in the UK than elsewhere? That's a great question, Will, and I think, you know, I look at the numbers and I'm astounded myself. You know, the uptake uh, in some of the European markets on our safety packs is up to 30%. In the UK, we're running about three, wow. so tenfold difference. Now, I don't think that's because safety isn't key to our customers, um, so we need to explore that in a bit more uh, detail. My hunch is that we need to communicate better and we need to explain better the benefits of the technology. Yeah. Um, like everything, you know, it's a value proposition and there's a price and a, and a value and I think we've got to build a story around what these systems can do and the benefits that they can bring uh, you know, for, for all vehicles. Yeah. Is this actually an industry first? This is an industry first, the ability to scan not just the track unit but also the track and trailer. Yeah. So Mike, this certainly looks familiar, right-hand drive Iconic. I've driven one of these in a quarry back in England, absolutely loved it. Now, I understand the benefits of this in London, but why have you got one here in Germany? Good question, Will. I think, you know, um, Iconic has been a fantastic success story in the UK since we launched it. Uh, in the last few years, with the focus on vulnerable road users in London and cycle and pedestrian injuries, you know, the concept I guess has taken another, another step forward, which is that you know, visibility with the eyeball of the driver and pedestrian or cyclist is, 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 has been proven to be the most effective you know, uh, uh, way of limiting accidents. And with the low cab height glazed door, a Conic clearly has a key, key, key advantage. Now that's just not an issue for London, it's also an issue for other cities in uh, the UK but of course also throughout the rest of Europe. So this is a, a stage now in the European setting for us to talk about you know, the safety benefits of the Iconic you know, and other cities in Europe are going to see that and hopefully will follow the lead that we've taken in London.